your host, Marcia Florence, for Just Ask. We've got a really great show for you today. We're interviewing Mike Harris, who is the Deputy Executive Director for PVA, which is Paralyzed Veterans of America. Stay with us. Be right back. Today, all around you, there are extraordinary people doing the most ordinary things. Spending time with their kids. Breaking a sweat at the gym. Finding something tasty to make for dinner. Living their lives. And while they have to put more effort into it than most of us, and more time, and a larger amount of will, you won't find them asking for sympathy. You won't find them asking for praise. Only for the chance to get up and do it all again tomorrow. Hi, Mike. Glad to have you on the show. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for coming. Mike, I have a few questions I'd like to ask you. First of all, uh, here on the show at Just Ask, what we try to do is enlighten our audience on um, persons with disabilities or handicaps. And all of our guests mainly will probably have one, one or the other. And we have spokespersons or organizations that will come on and give us some insight on what they have to offer or what services they provide. Uh, starting off, I want to ask you a few questions. Can you give us a little insight on your disability? Uh, no problem. Uh, my uh, injury happened about 10 years ago, uh, September of 86. I happened to be in the backseat passenger of an automobile. Uh, the uh, driver was going too fast for the road conditions and so he lost control of the automobile. Car flipped over on us and uh, I was uh, instantly uh, paralyzed from that moment on. It, uh, in a sense I went from being abled to disabled in just a fraction of a second. I uh, was flown by helicopter to U, uh, to U of M Hospital out in uh, Ann Arbor. I uh, spent four months in rehab. It was during this time that uh, I really, before the injury, I really didn't uh, know much about being uh, paralyzed or what, it, uh, what uh, went into it. I was amazed to find that uh, with paralysis, you uh, not only lose the ability to walk, but you also lose uh, the, the ability to control your bowel, the bladder. You lose sensation, uh, you lose uh, sexual dysfunction. Uh, that, that means the, uh, the, 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 the ability really to have children by uh, natural means. You, usually, you have to go through artificial means if you uh, plan on having a family. Uh, like I say, the stay was for four months and uh, during the four months I uh, learned a lot about who I was or who I am. And, uh, and I realized that uh, through the experience, uh, in a way, I uh, became a better person because I, I, uh, I learned a lot about things that I really didn't know existed. And when you're put in a situation like that, you really, it really uh, takes the most out of you in terms of trying to, to cope with the situation. So, so it, somehow, Mike, you're saying that you realize how it is to be on both sides of the world. In other words, you know once, what it was like um, when you weren't paralyzed sure, as well. Sure, sure. Because some, some of our audience, viewing audience, you know, may uh, not realize until it's their turn if something should happen to them or a loved one, what the effects of a uh, disability can do and, um, you know, the emotional state and things of that nature. Uh, but at this point in your life, um, the organizations that, you, that you've worked with, or better yet, the organization that you're uh, deputy director of, can you give us some insight on PVA, Paralyzed Veterans of America? Uh, PVA is an organization that was uh, started in 1946. It uh, is an organization that was started by veterans from World War II who had spinal cord injury. And their motivation for starting the organization was to have uh, some assistance in dealing with their uh, disability. They uh, felt that if, it was, if they didn't start it, then no one was going to come and uh, bat for them. 
Okay. And so it uh, started in 1946, and it, uh, the goal of PVA is uh, spinal cord uh, research uh, and helping veterans uh, receive benefits that they're entitled to. Uh, currently, we have a membership of 16,000. We're 33 chapters throughout the United States, and uh, we have 800 members in the uh, state of Michigan. Our office is located in Novi, and uh, we're there to serve the public, uh, disabled public, anytime they uh, confront a problem that they might not uh, have the ability to maybe solve themselves. We're there to okay. assist them. Now, you also assist. Uh individuals uh, beyond the spinal cord injury level, don't you? Uh, yes, we'll deal with anyone with any disability. It's uh, the great thing about um, a, being an advocate is that all advocates work together. Mm -hmm. We're, our goal is to solve the problem. If we don't have the answer, then what we'll do is uh, we will refer someone to someone who does have the answer. Right. We will make sure that the problem gets solved. That's, right. that's our goal, and, uh, and we'll do whatever it takes to, to solve the problem. Now, are there other organizations around um, that assist you or that work closely with you in problem solving um, situations? Uh, basically, the, uh, you know, the great thing is about my job is I've been on it for two months, and it seems like every day I learn something new, uh, you know, just by having conversations with people explaining problems that that are uh, in their lives and by uh, us addressing the problem it gives me an opportunity to to you know really learn about things that I probably wouldn't learn about if it wasn't for these conversations so for example housing issues might come up uh, and I'm not really an expert in a lot of these issues so what I'll do is refer them to people who I know who are experts and uh, from that standpoint we're uh, able to resolve the problem that way. Okay, what about um, the fact that some disabilities may affect the workplace? Uh, how do you go about, I mean, so take example for your own. Does your disability affect the workplace or has it been adjusted, modified for? Well, where I work at it's, uh, it's very accessible because of the organization I work for. But most people with disabilities are not afforded that luxury. Uh, I, for example, the job I had prior to working with the PBA, I, uh, the, the place wasn't accessible at all. Uh, in fact, for me to go to the bathroom, I had to go home because the bathroom was never modified to uh, provide for my needs. Uh, so accessibility in the workplace is a big issue, a big concern, and it's a concern that uh, you know, to accommodate a workplace does not cost that much. People would be a surprise mm -hmm. at at the cost factor that goes into it. Usually, the average is about five hundred bucks. Uh, is that the ramp, or more, that could be any particular? It, uh, it could be any. It's just the making the uh, accessible so you can even enter into the place, making mm -hmm. it wide enough. Uh, most places don't even need a ramp. Uh, there's. The goal is to modify a place so a person can uh, use their facility. And you look at the place and you examine the place and you take what's available and you, you, and you construct it according to what's available. But are there companies that are, um, you know, mostly are there companies or places that a person can call to find out what the modification rates would be? Or? They could, they would definitely call us. That's what we're there for. We're, okay. uh, we're there to assist the employee and employer we'll, we do it for free. Uh, we have people who uh, we contact when we're not update on all the uh, uh, laws that are out there who are uh, highly qualified to do so. Okay. And so they, we always recommend that they call us and we will assist them for free. That's what we're there for. That's great. Okay. Now, Mike, I want to ask you this question because a lot of people um, sometimes are not sure what they would like to see change, but uh, in what areas of society or work would you like to see changes and what type? You're talking public perceptions on... Uh, sure. sure. Okay. I, I, I would... Public perception... Uh, I guess our, our, uh, our responsibility or our goal basically is to educate the public so they understand what ADA is about. It's, it's basically a civil rights uh, that's, that's been given to the disabled community. 
uh, it's a right that they have, they're entitled to. Uh, a lot of people perceive it to be, a un, a, a, be an undue burden to the communities because of the financial uh, situations that come, in, come into play. And uh, unfortunately, the financial burdens are not as steep as the public is led to believe. Uh, a lot of uh, figures are exaggerated uh, when it comes to, uh, to ADA. Well, I noticed that you mentioned ADA now. In the fact that you work with ADA, um, however, the laws, are they broken down well enough that a person would know what category or what area that they should be looking for or researching? Because it appears that, uh, and this is my opinion, that the book has been narrowed to uh, wheelchair recipients. So there's like only so much saying for the blind, mm. for the deaf. ADA covers all disabilities. It, uh, it's not only for spinal cord or people in wheelchair. You, you have the blind, the hearing impaired, uh, in fact, ADA is broken down into four really basic areas. Your employment issues, okay. your uh, public accommodations, your telecommunications, and transportation. And basically, like for example, telecommunications is basically for the hearing impaired. Uh, your transportation could be for any disability. In fact, it's interesting, uh, you know, when talking about ADA, the effect that it's had I was reading an article today where when ADA was uh, first uh, came into effect in 1990, uh, 20 million Americans uh, used our transit system. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, 1995, uh, that, that figure went up to 35 million, and they project by 1997, 48 million. So it shows you the effect that ADA has had, that it has allowed people who in the past has not had the Access to to use our transportation system because they just couldn't get onto the uh, to the bus, and uh, since ADA has been incorporated, uh, you can see the good that it's provided. So a person can actually call the one eight hundred number and find out from ADA what services they need. So if they you know if they have a direct question, they could be directed towards. Well, they would be better off calling organizations like ours. Uh, we do uh, have a uh, one eight hundred number. But uh, uh, unfortunately, I I'm, don't know that offhand okay. right now. I do know the number that they can call. It's uh, area code eight one zero four seven six nine thousand. And uh, anytime they have a, a question in regards to ADA, we're there to try and assist them. Okay. Well, Mike, I want to thank you so much for coming on and giving us some insight on yourself as well as um, PVA. And we will air that number at the end of the show. So thank you so much, and we'd like to have you on our show again. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you. Thank you. Birmingham, Bloomfield, Bloomfield Hill, Franklin Village, Bingham Farm, Beverly Hills. It's 24 minutes past the hour. Welcome to Local Edition. I'm Joe Upton. Bloomfield Bank. If it's news that affects Lake our town, it's on Headline Bay News Bay Local Bay Edition. Bay Every Bay day, Bay every Bay hour, Bay the award-winning Local Bay Edition Bay covers Bay our community Bay like no one else can. 24 hours a day, Booth Communications Channel 40 is the home of CNN's Headline News. And at 24 minutes after every hour, Headline News is the home of Local Edition. If anyone ever tells you that you ask too many questions, that your thoughts aren't important, or you're trying too hard, if they say you should never stand out, get involved, stick up for what you believe. And if they tell you that you think too much, or that you dream too much, truth, if anyone ever tells you you're too much anything, or not enough anything, or what they think means nothing. A message from the U.S. Navy, where we believe the only way to grow is to rise to the challenge. back to the second half of the show. We're going to be interviewing Dale Jennings of Young Country Radio. Stay tuned. Be right back. It is a window into the world of a lost civilization. A rare chance to experience a people's thoughts, fears, and values through their exquisite possessions. Left behind in burial chambers almost 2,000 years ago. Discover for yourself the royal tombs of Sipan, the most significant archaeological discovery of the Western Hemisphere, now at the Detroit Institute of Arts. 
Hi, Daryl. Glad, glad to have you on the show. Nice to be here. You know, Daryl, every time we open up the show, we always have to ask a particular question. Mm -hmm. And that question is for our guests who always try to give us some insight on their disability. And of course, I'm going to ask you that question as well. And the reason we do this is so that our audience, who is our viewing audience, can get an understanding of a person with a disability or a handicap. And we also try to let them know that even though you may have uh, a handicap or a disability, it does not stop you from socializing or functioning or working. So as usual, I want to ask that question of you, Daryl. Could you give us a little insight on your disability? Uh, well, I'm not that, that knowledgeable about it. I, it's a cerebral palsy, and it's a, it's a mild case. Uh, it, in a lot of cases, it, well, it, it affects people differently. Uh, in my case, it's mild and uh, doesn't affect my speech or my... Uh, my uh, motor abilities. Okay. And I mean, so if you have a mild case of it, um, is it expected to increase as you get older or uh, something? Well, it doesn't get any worse and it unfortunately it doesn't get any better. It okay. uh, just stays the same. Okay. So does your disability affect the, any of your way of living or your work? Uh, not really. Of course, then again, I really wouldn't know because I've had it all my life. It's a birth defect. So, um, I really don't know any different. The only thing I can't do is play basketball. Okay. <laughs> now, one thing I don't think the general public knows or understands is that when you have a, a disability at birth, some type of effect at birth, mm -hmm. and you grow up with it, uh, it's handled differently because no one may tell you that you are quote unquote handicapped or, or disabled and you really just go along your daily activities just like every other child. Like, like anybody else. I mean you don't know any different. Until uh, someone brings it to your somebody attention. Until somebody brings it to your attention. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now Daryl we know that you work for Young Country Radio Station yes. as a assistant production director. Yeah, I'm the assistant production director out there. And, and what, do you, what does that actually do? Uh, well it entails um, dubbing off or copying commercials and uh, the agency commercials they send us. And occasionally I'll do tags. They joke around with me a lot around there. <laughs> I do tags. I do tags and uh, write commercials and uh, a lot of production around there. Okay, so you know I think that um, something that you want to get into, regardless to what your disability or handicap is, you should really give it a try. Is that the way you feel and how you came about your job? Well, just like any other business, there's a lot of discrimination, regardless of. Uh, uh, race, uh, handicap, you know, I encountered a lot of that. Fortunately, at Young Country, I mean, they treat me like anybody else around there. They're, they're really nice around there. But I have encountered a lot of, uh, a lot of discrimination uh, in the business in Detroit. So I'm not going to pretend it doesn't exist. It does exist. Okay, now uh, at Young Country, is it accessible for you or is it accessible for a person in a wheelchair or something like that? Very. Uh, there are no stairs. It's, uh, it's in the Travelers uh, Towers. In Southfield, uh, there's an elevator, no, uh, no bumps or anything for a wheelchair to roll over. It's 100% accessible. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, I did notice, Daryl, that you drive. And yes, I do. The reason I want to mention this about driving is this, the mere fact that um, I think our viewers don't realize that regardless if you're in a wheelchair <laughs> or um, your sensory motors are limited, they're not totally cut off. So you have certain devices in your car or something? Yeah, I have, I have uh, a hand control in my car, but uh, I use it primarily in rush hour traffic or when I'm tired. Normally, I'll just drive with my feet, you know, okay. normally. Okay. Yeah. Did any organizations uh, assist you? Actually, uh, when I bought the car, uh, I, was, I assumed that I would have to, well, the first hand control unit I bought, I had to pay $400 out of my own pocket. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> and the second, uh, second unit, I guess, uh, uh, I guess because uh, auto manu manufacturers are a little more sensitive to people with okay. people with disabilities, okay. they supplied it free this time. So oh, okay, oh. wonderful, wonderful. Me so, hours. so you did bring it to their attention that you were in need of such a device. Actually, I didn't have to. The uh, the salesperson brought it to my attention, and I told him that I had paid four hundred dollars for the unit in the past, and he said, "Oh, well, you don't have to do that. You know, we, you know, that's nice. We'll help you out." That does. Yeah. That's, that's real nice. It is. Okay. It was quite nice. Okay, so, you know, because I don't think that, well, I'm sure everybody can't go to that car dealer and we won't mention them. No. And, and, and ask, you know, can I get a free device and things <laughs> like that. But um, I'm sure that was very helpful to you. Yes, it you was. Know, information. Quite do you do any research in trying to find assistance in any programs? Um, well, fortunately, in my case, uh, I'm not impeded uh, by a lot of barriers. It's. Uh, 
I do what I can, and there's not a lot of things that I, I can't do. Like I said, just, you know, maybe playing basketball. Okay. <laughs> but I'm a baseball fan, so that really oh. doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> can you give us a little information on your, on your goals and your accomplishments? Uh, well, presently I'm involved in, uh, I guess, the very preliminary uh, steps in starting a production company. Uh, eventually, I'd like to, to have that uh, be successful and self-supportive. Uh, of course, I'm uh, maintaining my radio career. I'd like to be on the air somewhere in Detroit. Um, Detroit's my hometown, and I plan on living here for quite some time. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. that's good. See, what we try to do is we have a lot of young people uh, who may be watching the show, and they kind of wonder, uh, as they're growing older, what should they do or what can they do? And we want them to be aware that um, if you give it a try, you know, you, this is something you may can do. And, I, and I, I see you're very happy at Young Country. Uh, yes, I love it over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Just, you know, don't, I, I'm trying not to make them think I don't Oh, okay, okay, I understand. <laughs> but, you know, what, what it is is that um, our young people may not know when they're coming up what they should do and where they should go to seek assistance or if they really have the opportunity to work in certain capacities. They mm -hmm. may feel that they're limited. And so, as I said before, on the show, we always try to bring forth the information about a person so mm -hmm. that whoever's listening, if they know someone or that themselves is of that nature, uh, they'll say, wow, you know, I wouldn't mind doing that. Or, wow, I'm not the only one that feels this way, you know. And, and that gives them a better understanding of the nature of, of their disability or their handicap. Mm -hmm. And uh, this show is dedicated and designed, you know, to do that. Yeah. And so I'm always glad to have, you know, good guests on and everything. Well, thank you. It's nice I, to be here. Okay. And I, well, I, you're only limited by, by your own mind. I mean, uh, like, sure, like I said, there's a lot of discrimination out there, but just uh, push it aside and keep on trying. Well, do you think or do you have um, any, er do you feel like there's any areas in society that should be worked on? Um, again, well, see, I... I <laughs> and one who believes that everyone should have equal opportunity. I, 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 I keep mentioning the word discrimination. It, it, it just uh, irks me to think that somebody would discriminate against somebody simply because of the color of his skin or because he, he rides in a wheelchair or walks on crutches. I mean, he has the same ability that someone who, you know, is quote unquote normal has. And, you know, it's just, you know. Well, that, that's. Well put. That is well put. I mean, because the workforce has a lot to learn from persons with handicap and disabilities. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're, to me, it should be one or two persons in every department. I don't care what it is. It should be some person of, of any nature in a department learning something so we can go back to the schools or have more programs like this, yeah. you know, and provide a network so that our next generation will have a better head start than some of us. Exactly. You know, and if, if we don't do that, then we'll <laughs> always be wondering and trying to get assistance and we don't know which way to go. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad to know that uh, nothing stands in your way. No, nothing stands in my way. That, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a good way to put it, Gerald. <laughs> that's a good way. So have you had many jobs or? Uh, uh, yes, especially in this business, uh, in, in mass communications, uh, you, before your career is over, you're going to work at least five, ten jobs before your career is over, and my resume is already two pages long. Oh, okay. <laughs> Only oh, been in the business twelve years. You, you say you work for Young Country. Are you sure you're not a comedian? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that that that's real good, Daryl. That's real good. I'm sure uh, the people at Young Country can't wait to see this particular segment of the show. I'm sure they can't wait. <laughs> And, and they sound like they seem like a good group of people. They to are. Work they're, with. they're a real good uh, group of people, and they treat me just like anybody else around. In fact, they treat me uh, a, a little. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> they, they, they give me a. They put me through a lot of uh, uh, hassles out there. Only just in fun. I mean, they don't. Now, let me ask you this: Have you found yourself being a mentor to anyone um, or any group or something? Only to, to those, uh, like my neighbors and my neighbor's kids, uh, mm -hmm. they, I don't, I can't say they look up to me, but a lot of people say, well, you know, Daryl's kind of semi-successful, you know, he's, he's doing pretty good, so he's not a bad, bad guy to look up okay. to. Okay, but do you get a lot of kids wondering or asking questions? Oh, yeah. About this? <laughs> so how do you feel about that? Do you, do you just open up and talk about it, or are you rather just... Yeah, that's the best way to do it. I mean, 
it's it's not good to just hide that because if you open up and talk to the kids, they they accept it as something normal. I mean, it's not like you know this person has a disability; he should be you know put aside and mm -hmm. you know stared at or whatever. Did you go to a regular public school? Or? Um, <laughs> excuse me. My first, uh, I think, grades one through uh, nine, I went to uh, a school for disabled children. But that was back in the 60s and 70s, and since then, times have changed. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I would like to have gone to a quote-unquote normal school, uh, just to see what that was like and experience that. But I went to Wayne State, and, uh, you know, there were a lot of uh, disabled people there, and a lot of, it was, you know, the campus was diverse. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Great. So, do you feel like when you were on a campus like that, that you all are real close? Yeah, because, I mean, because, because you have something similar in common. Yeah, I mean, Wayne State was like a microcosm of the world because there were, you know, people of all nationalities, people with disabilities, people without disabilities. Right. And uh, I enjoyed it. All right. Well, I'm telling you, you you were very enlightening to um, <laughs> interview, oh, and thank you. Um, I'm sure the people at Young Country are going to keep you, and we'll be, you know, looking forward to hearing yes. more from you. We like to have you back on the show well, in the I'd future. Like to come back. And I just want to thank you again for being a guest on the show. Thank you. And as usual, uh, like I said before, ladies and gentlemen, we always try to give some insight to uh, better educate the general public on disabilities, handicaps, and it's always enlightening to have people like uh, Daryl Jennings and Mike Harris of PVA. And if you know someone that's interested in coming on the show, the uh, address that you can write to as a guest will be shown, as well as there's a phone number. And you can always call and leave us a message, and we'll call you back and see what dates we can get you to come in. So once again, as I always say, if you know someone with a disability, don't be afraid to ask, just ask. If you or someone you know is disabled and would like to appear on Just Ask, please write to Just Ask, care of Booth Communications, 645 South Eaton, Birmingham, Michigan, 48009. <laughs> give someone they don't know a gift. They do it because this gift saves lives. And the need for it is desperate. We need over 20,000 people to give this precious gift every day. Please give blood. There's a life to be saved right now. Call the American Red Cross at 1-800-GIVE-LIFE. The beauty of saying thank you is you can do it in so many ways. A pat on the back, a smile, a bear hug is always nice. So for everyone who supported our United Way, this is a pat on the back, a big toothy smile, and a bear hug all rolled into one just for you. You reached people who really needed help, and you touched us all. So without further ado, a heartfelt word from us to you.